Hey folks, welcome back to Bear Mountain today. We are coming back around and gonna, you know, harvest the sweet potatoes. We got a cold spat coming at us that uh, it's probably gonna take these plants out in the next couple of days, so we're not gonna get anything more out of it. So at this point, um, we're gonna dig these guys up. I did dig up a couple of plants just as a test. And we are getting, I mean, they're not huge, but you know, you gotta remember this is Oregon, so. Um, we did get actually a couple of bakers out of it so far, but I can already see where I'm starting to get um, some mice that are working on things, so it's time to get them out of the ground. And uh, the vines are still healthy. Uh, boy, these guys would just grow till it freezes, but it's just come time. We gotta gotta take care of it. So what I'm gonna do is I'll probe around, find a plant, cut the vine out, and then we'll just dig this out and let's just see how much we get out of this bed. What do you think is chewing on the leaves? Slugs. Yeah, it's been wet, you know, so it's a great place to hide underneath the foliage and all that, but the plants are outgrowing it. I mean, it, I mean, if we wanted to, I mean, we could eat these tips as, uh, you know, put them in a salad. They're edible. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we've already eaten some of them. Actually, re really pretty good, as a green goes. So, I'm just going to find a plant and dig them up. I've got 23 of them in here, so they should be around here someplace. should have done is made FPJ out of this. Oops. Didn't do that. Next year. Uh, there's a plant right here. This one's a small one here. I'm not sure how much is in it. is nice and soft so that's a good thing well that one didn't really have much and this one's kind of green so what that stinks yeah but you know what we can use these small guys and make it soup I kind of didn't think that one was going to produce that much. So, these were store-bought, so we don't know yeah, we're not what, sure what the variety, variety is. is, or if they were treated or anything. Well, Although they, they did it did spry. say that it was organic, it right? Was organic. But, it might mean that we need to... You know, get real sweet potatoes. Well, we need to get a variety that maybe is more situated for northern climates. I mean, this one is probably a variety that's best suited for California. Right. And so it does well, you know, where it's warm for a long period of time. I mean, this guy, these guys had a real slow start because of... Um, it was a cool June. A cool June. Yeah. So like this one, I'm not sure it produced. No, it's got a couple in it. Yeah. That one's, as you can see, ah. we've had, this is, this is what I was afraid of leaving these guys in, that we were going to end up with that. Rodents working on them. Where but, are my cat? But we can cut that off. And I want a perfect specimen. Yeah, well, sometimes things don't work out.
right by me it did. What? Huh? That was... That was a good one. I almost missed it. Okay, we're about a, eh, a little more than a third, maybe closer to a halfway through the bed. Some plants come up with a lot of small ones, but then we've got some other ones that are really, they're actually good sized bakers. Um, so it's kind of varying all over the place. Like this one's tied up in a knot, so there's a couple of different ones in this one. But uh, and not too much rodent damage. We had a couple on the other side that had some damage, but these guys all look pretty good. So we'll just continue digging them out, see where we get. I think we're going to have a nice harvest out of this for no real investment. Yeah, they come out easy, but I wish they were bigger. You're holding them like they're a fish. <laughs> Ew. Well, this is what we got out of the bed. Um, we did get a few bakers, but I'd say they probably, you know, what you consider baking size sweet potato, that amounted to maybe 10% of what we dug out of this. We got a lot of guys that are just long and skinny. And probably what we're going to do after these guys, I, this is what I'm thinking about these skinny guys, is um, after they cure in a week or two, we'll, assuming that they're still okay and they didn't shrivel up to nothing. Um, we'll dry them out and then use them kind of like uh, for soup. And then the other guys, some of these guys have a little bit of green on it. Once they kind of cure, I'll just cut the green parts off and um, we can use those guys, you know, as kind of a, like a cut, cut up sweet potato chunks. I don't think we got maybe like, you know, like I said, maybe 10% or of what you size that you call them bakers so to speak what a bummer but you got to remember we're in oregon we're at the near the 45th parallel um this is probably a variety that was suited for the southeast or even southern california the southern san joaquin valley so <clears throat> you know not knowing what we're doing and it was free it's not bad this is probably about 25 30 pounds of potato in here so but not we've grown yeah. sweet potatoes in the past that well, they, they were a different type they're Georgia jet um, which is kind of more oriented for up here but we couldn't get those slips it was way too late so because I'm on the hunt next. for slips yeah I mean so I, I don't know if it's gonna be the same next year but you know whenever they come up we just got to get in line to get them because um, there wasn't enough to go around so, what would you do different besides the variety? Well, the nearest thing I can tell is maybe up here, um, getting these guys out into an area where there's more sun, and maybe spacing the plants a little further apart. Because of what I did notice is that the plants that were on the edge of the bed tended to have the bigger tubers on. The ones that were inside, because they had to compete uh, with so much of the vine from the ones on the outside that maybe they just didn't get enough You know enough energy to make the tubers that they needed to make So I think yeah, maybe that that would be space them out better and um, The mulch on top of the soil system that worked pretty good because all I did was uh, This this was a bed that was pretty compacted and we applied uh, some K&F um, IMO on here Put a mulch on it and um, you know a couple times hitting it with uh, uh, JMS 
which is Judan Microbiology Solutions, kind of the same idea. It's, it's indigenous microorganism solutions, kind of like a compost tea in a sense. And then keeping the mulch on top and seemed to, seemed to work. The mulch we used was just chopped up old blackberry vines. And you can still see they're, I mean, they're well on their way out, but it's actually the soil is really soft and fluffy. So hard, compacted soil wasn't an issue. So overall, I think, you know, as an experiment, it was kind of fun to do. And yeah, we still got something to eat out of it too. I mean, you look at it, I guess it wasn't that bad of a deal. But for the future, we definitely, I think you need to get varieties that are suited to do well in your climate. We're just uh, maybe a little too far north and a little too cool to get this particular variety maybe to perform its optimum. So anyway, uh, I want to thank you for watching today and you know, we, uh, we did a video on this uh, a couple of weeks back where we started to, to dig them and found out that they weren't ready. Went another month. I think um, they got about as far as they can get. It yeah. took, uh, well, four months to grow these, so. Guess that's as good as it gets. That's as good as it gets with a store-bought sweet potato. So thank you all for watching, and I hope you have a good day. Stay safe. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.